Uh-oh, does your wallet look like this at the end of the month? Or does your bank account look like this constantly? Sounds like you can't seem to find your money, huh? You gonna give me my money? Where's my money, man? But, good thing you're here, because today I will be going over 5 ways to take back control of your money. Teach it who's boss. Now, I'll be honest, it won't be easy. But, keeping these 5 ways in mind, whenever you take out your wallet, we'll keep some green in your wallet. Now let's go. First up, maybe consider not eating out. This is probably one of the worst offenders to your wallet. That daily morning coffee or that burger from your favorite fast food joint. Those may seem insignificant, but imagine if you did that five days a week. Or maybe even comboed the two. That's at least $100 to $200 a month. And for a year, it's about $1,200 to $2,400 a year. That's crazy. Now, I'm not saying to cut it out completely. But instead, do it less often. Once or twice a month will do, and it'll make eating those foods even more rewarding. In the meantime though, think about making coffee at home, putting it in a thermos, or maybe even just packing some leftovers or a sandwich for lunch. Those combined will definitely save some green and stave off the hunger monster. Second on the list is that pesky impulse buying. In fact, stores are set up for you to impulse buy. That delicious looking candy bar or those cold beverages in those refrigerators, those are set up for you to impulse buy. Oh, and it's a big mistake to go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Your tummy will do all of the shopping instead of your brain. <laughs> My suggestion to help with this is to make a list before you go to the store itself. And then with that list, stick to it like a horse with blinders. <laughs> that way you'll make it through the store and your wallet will be happier. Now for purchases over about $20, you definitely should take time in making that decision. Take a few days to really decide if you actually need this item, or I'll be honest, it'll be gathering dust in your drawer, leaving you with buyer's remorse, which is the worst. Yeah, let's not do that. This brings me to my next point, which is budgeting. With that list you just made for groceries, well, just slap a budget on it. Now, budgeting will help you purposefully look at the prices of those items you picked up and help you make a more conscious decision. As you budget, you'll get better at knowing the prices for things and you'll know when something is a little bit too expensive. Looking at you, inflation. Now, just a heads up, it's much easier to budget for one person than it is for a bigger family. It actually gets more complicated. But that's what makes budgeting so important, is so that you don't go in blind, and instead you go in with a plan of attack. Budgeting comes hand in hand with my next point, which is foregoing those brand names and Choosing to pick a cheaper brand. Instead of paying the iron price for essentially the same thing, why not pay for the cheaper store brand? Most stores have their own brand for the basic everyday things, and in the end, you can save cents to dollars when you choose to go this route. There are also stores like Aldi and Little that have their own private brands that are just as good and at a bargain price. Not only that, their ingredients are about the same to their brand name competitor. Why pay $1.99 for cream cheese when you can pay $1.25 for the same similar cream cheese? Now, some people say that the brand name tastes much better. Sure, maybe it does. Now, if your objective is to just get some cream cheese on a bagel and have it taste very similar, then the cheaper brand won't matter. In the end, if it's going to save you money, then do it. Finally, we get to the last point, which is taking advantage of your local thrift store and other secondhand places. There are plenty of quality items that are being sold at the thrift store that it's at a fraction of the price. In fact, a lot of the items that are donated are new and they're still tagged. And that's, that's the best kind of deal. A local thrift store not only has clothes, they have furniture, toys, cookware, 
decorations, a whole slew of things. By going through the thrift store, you're actually giving these items that were thrown out essentially a new life, which will not only save you money, but is also really good for the environment. Pro tip, keep an eye on your local thrift store because sometimes during the holidays, they have 50% off everything. That's not just Christmas or Thanksgiving, that's 4th of July, Labor Day, all those major holidays will have some sort of sale. That just means your savings are stacking. Quadruple. Now, if you don't want that classic thrift store smell and experience, well, there's a lot of digital options that you can do. There are a bunch of apps out there and a bunch of already pre-existing platforms. For example, you have Facebook Marketplace, you have OfferUp, you have Nextdoor, you have Craigslist. You've got a bunch of options. Instead, you can save money by buying these things secondhand from the person that owned it before you. And it's even better if you know the person because you might even get a better deal. Alrighty, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with me today as we went along our five ways to reclaim your money. I know during these times, money is a little bit hard, so making sure that you, you know, really try to save money wherever you can. That's super important. Now, what's really good about the ways that I gave today was that you can start doing them today. You don't have to wait for anything. So get started. Good luck. Hopefully you can find some good secondhand thrift store finds and get that budget going. Save some money. Till next time. There are also stores like Aldi and Little. Little? Lytle? Little? Little.